Hey guys, Will here. So today is a very exciting day because, well, let me just show you. We finally have ambient lighting inside the sim rig. So as I drive down the straight here, you can see, well, through the pit lane, I should say, the shadows that are cast on the car are also casting across me. And this is the most immersive thing I think I've done to the sim rig yet. So today we're gonna to show you how to do it and uh, take you for a drive with the finished result as well. Strap in, this is gonna be a good one. So adaptive ambient lighting is something that I've wanted to integrate into our sim rig here for pretty much since we built the 665 inch rig, to be honest with you guys. Now I've been keeping an eye on the technology for a while now and I was actually under the impression that you needed one of the Philips Hue HDMI sync boxes to make this work. Now those of you who've been keeping an eye on the channel would know we're actually using DisplayPort connections for our three monitors that we use on the rig and therefore I just thought that this wasn't really possible but a little sim racing channel with just under a thousand subscribers who I'm hoping will have a lot more than a thousand by the time you guys have watched this video. Uh, SimGP put out a video the other day explaining how it's actually possible to do ambient lighting without actually intercepting any video signal at all so it's actually using software installed on the PC to make all this work so as soon as I saw that my eyes lit up and I was like okay we have to give this a try so we went and did a bit of shopping around we got the stuff that you see on the desk here in front of us now and I'll run you through quickly what we have here uh, now your implementation will probably end up being different from ours you'll notice that the lights that we've chosen for our implementation are different from those that SimGP used as well but there are some good reasons why we've chosen the lights that we have for our particular build so we'll take you through all that as well so there's there's four main components in this ecosystem that you're gonna to need to make this work. Two of those being software and two of them being hardware. So you're gonna need the sync app on your desktop PC, this the system that's actually running the sim. You're gonna need the app on your smartphone as well. We'll take you through those and how those are configured in just a moment. Then you're gonna need yourself one of these Philips Hue bridges. And this is what creates the connection or the bridge between the instructions that have been sent by the software and the lights themselves. So the lights themselves aren't individually addressable directly through through the software, they have to be controlled through the bridge and that needs to be connected to your network as long as you have your smartphone and your desktop PC that's running the SIM connected to the same network as the bridge is connected to, all of this should work. And then we've got the lights themselves. So we've chosen the white and color ambient outdoor lighting strips, the two meter ones. There's a couple of good reasons why we chose those for our particular implementation here. But you'll notice that what we've used is different from what SimGP used. And depending on your configuration and the, I guess the surrounding area around your rig as well, will stipulate what's gonna work best for you. So what I'd suggest is jump on the website. We've put some links down in the description below uh, and have a little bit of a browse, have a bit of a think about what you think is gonna suit your particular setup best. Now, the reasons why we've chosen these lights, uh, there's a couple of good reasons. So first of all, they're nice and bendable. You can see this is the strip here and the light comes out from the front here and you can see it's actually bendable that way, which means you can bend it around corners. Now the, um, the normal strips, the non-outdoor ones are a little bit more like this, I don't actually have one here to show you, but you can imagine if that's the top of the strip there, you can't bend it around this way, you can only bend it that way. So it makes it a little bit difficult to shape and still have the light coming straight down. We're actually gonna mount this on the ceiling above the rig here. One of the reasons that we need to do that is because because of the size of the screens that we're using here, if we have the lights any lower, they start to reflect on the screen and you start to see it in the camera. So we actually need to have these quite high above the rig and shining down. And having it bendable like this means we can shape it around and sort of get it into the positions that we need to where it's casting the light in the areas that we need without sort of reflecting off the screen. So that's the theory anyway. We'll see how well it works in practice a little bit later on. So we bought three of those, but again, I would recommend going through, checking the range and making sure that you get what's gonna suit you best. You can get individual bulbs, you can get different types of strips, and uh, yeah, there's all sorts of different configurations. One of the other things I really like about these strip lights too, is I've got this kind of silicon diffuser over the top, which diffuses the light a little bit better than the indoor type ones do. So even though the outdoor type is a little bit more expensive than the indoor, I think it's gonna work a little bit better for our implementation. But the most important thing is that whatever you buy in the range, you need to make sure it has these two little bits here. So you need to have the warm to cool color temperature adjustment as well as the 16 million colors. A couple of products in the range, even though they do connect through the hub, they don't have the RGB colors or the 16 million colors. You need to make sure you have that for this to work at its absolute 
absolute best. Okay, so we've got all the hardware that we're gonna need here laid out on the table in front of us. We'll get this all set up here first before moving it over, getting it installed on the sim. So we've got our three light strips. Those are connected to power, but not turned on just yet. Then we have our Philips Hue bridge, and that is connected to power, of course, as well as an ethernet connection directly to the Wi-Fi router, the same Wi-Fi router, the same network that our phone is operating on and our sim PC is connected to as well. And that is vitally important. So let's go ahead and switch on the three light strips now. There we go. And let's have a look at our app. So at this point, we've got the three lights on. Those are automatically gonna go into a pairing mode. And then our bridge has its three lights illuminated to showing that it's connected to our network and power is present and it's ready for a connection. So we're gonna jump on the app now. We go into the app store and this is available for Android as well as iPhone. We're gonna be using an iPhone here, but exactly the same process. You go into the Google Play Store or the App Store, find the Philips Hue app and download it. And then we're gonna open it up. And then we should automatically see a screen that allows us to search for Hugh Bridges. So we'll just have a look here. It almost sounds like a name, doesn't it? Hugh Bridges. <laughs> there we go. One new Hugh Bridge found. So we're going to hit connect. And you can see this is all very intuitive. It kind of just walks you through the whole process really, really easy. I don't know why it's a pour, but that's okay. So we're going to push the button on the bridge. And straight away, that was instant. It just connected. So this is all looking like it's going to be pretty straightforward, which makes me very happy. Uh, we can enable HomeKit here to do other things like home control, voice activation. Uh, those aren't really relevant for what we're doing here, but um, if you guys are interested in that, let us know. We might put together another guide where we can sort of talk about home automation and things like that. Uh, we're gonna skip that step for now. And it says no lights connected. So this is where we're talking about. We're now connected to the bridge, but we haven't established a connection between the bridges and the lights yet. So we're gonna go add a light and we're going to search. And we should see three lights pop up here. So we can see searching for devices. We've got one, two, and three popped up. Again, all happened very straightforward. No problems at all. So we're gonna rename them. And I think we might just call them strip left, strip middle, and strip right. I think that's probably gonna be the most logical. So strip left and return. Go back. Strip middle and back and strip right. You may have noticed there it actually blinked the one that we were working on as well so we can identify those, but that'll become a lot more clear in just a moment as well, so. Okay, so those are those three connected. We're gonna hit next again. And now we need to create a room. So we'll go create room and we'll give it a icon that looks like, what do we reckon, a car maybe? We should have a car, yeah, driveway. So we'll go car because it's a sim, and then we'll just call it sim. Hit save, and next. Congratulations, your Hue app is up and running, let's go. Okay, so now we should have control of our lights. We can dim, so you can see there's the left one, so we've actually got those a little bit out of whack there. That's the left with the middle and the right. This is a really nice app, it's really nicely done. And we can switch them off and on as well. And you can see that's really nice how they fade in and out as well. It's all very, very, very refined. And then we can also adjust the colors as well so we can move around the color wheel. And those are really nice and bright. Obviously we've got all the studio lights running at the moment as well, but I think that's gonna work really well. I think those are gonna be plenty bright enough once we dip out all the other lights. And my intention here is that we'll probably actually have no other lights on in the room at all. So it's gonna be a completely dark room with just the strip lights responsible for the ambient lighting. I think that's gonna work really well. So let's exit back out of that again. So then we're gonna tap on settings and we're gonna click on entertainment areas and we wanna set up a profile for nighttime driving as well as daytime driving because we're gonna need to move around the lights and change how they interpret the signal from the PC a little bit differently depending on the type of driving that we're doing. So we're gonna create area and we're gonna add all three to each area. We can, of course, change this later on if we need to as well. We'll go continue. Lights are ready. And then we can position our lights around. So we'll worry about the positioning once we've got this all mounted up a little bit later on. I'll explain all this a little bit better for you guys. We'll hit next. And we can change the height as well, but that's all fine. We'll run that for now. That's all working just fine. And yeah, it's just wanting to go through all three lights and make sure they're functioning. So got it. That is one entertainment area and we'll tap on that again so we can rename it and we'll call that daytime. 
and we'll create another entertainment area. Same deal again, we're gonna add all three lights. Lights are ready, drag them into position. Test area. And again, we will configure all of this and I'll explain how all this works a little bit later on, but for now we just need to power through it. Perfect match. All good. And got it, and then we're gonna call that nighttime. Hit save. Okay, so now we have our daytime and our nighttime entertainment areas. So with that all set up and connected, let's move over to the SIM PC now and we'll show you how the software configuration there works and how all four parts of this puzzle integrate together to get the lights working and responding to what's happening in the SIM. Then we'll look at placement, we'll get the lights mounted up above the SIM and then we can get in and do some driving. Okay, so we've got our lights connected to the hub. The hub is connected to the phone app. Now for the last piece of the puzzle where we connect the phone app to the SIM PC. It all seems very complex, but actually integrates really nicely as we've seen so far. So what you're gonna need to do is jump onto the intertubes and go to the Philips Hue website. I'll put a link down in the description below for you guys. You're gonna to wanna to download yourself the Sync app. So click on download for Windows. Obviously you're not gonna be downloading for Mac because you're not gonna be SIM racing on a Mac. We hit download and it will download the app. Once you've got that installed, you'll be presented with this guy right here. So you can see because we have this PC connected to the same network as our app is connected to and the bridge, this has already detected all the system without us having to do anything. So you can see it's got our daytime and our nighttime modes there. So we're gonna select the daytime mode. We'll start off with that one. Click on daytime, but it's now set to our current area. And then we're gonna click the back button here and this gives us our control interface. So you can see it's kind of replicating or I guess mirroring what we have on the screen of our phone here as well. And you can see if we go up and down here, it's a little bit laggy, but it is actually mirroring what we've got here. And if we do it here as well, we should see the same thing mirrored on our phone screen too. So pretty cool. And then we have a bunch of options here for different types of control. So we've got the option to control from a game or control from a video. And this allows us to take a portion of the screen and actually use that to determine the color that's gonna be reproduced in our lights. So what we need to do is select the game option here, and then we're gonna click on settings. And then we're gonna scroll down to game preferences. We're gonna click on automatically add games to the sync list. Now you can manually add them in as well if you need to, but we found it seemed to be detecting games just fine. You can click on add a game and just basically select from any game that's currently running. We don't have anything running currently, so it's not showing anything, but that's all fine. So that's gonna be using the currently active game for the color interpretation, or we can use video mode as well. So if we're playing a video or something like that, it'll also do the same thing. Now we found that video mode did seem to work for gaming as well. We didn't see any major difference between the two, but you know, because it seems to make more sense to have games selected, that's what we're gonna do. Now we've got some checkboxes down here for what is essentially filtering. So if we have it on subtle, it means that it's gonna roll off and fade in and fade out nice and smoothly. Moderate will be a little bit more intense, high, and then extreme. So obviously if we're flashing through shadows really quickly, we may want to you know, choose extreme mode. You know, have a fiddle around and see what suits you best. We also have the option here to use audio for effects as well, but we're not gonna be touching on that in today's video. So what we wanna do now is crank our brightness up to 100%, and then we're gonna click on Start Light Sync, and that should get the show running. So you can see straight away, you should actually see on my face the light reflected off. We've just got the three lights kind of positioned around at the moment. So you'll probably see reflections on the screens around me and things like that. Obviously we'll get these positioned properly a little bit later on in the video, but for now you should at least see the effect on the side of my face and on the steering wheel. So what we'll do now is we'll just quickly drive around to the back straight where we've got a whole lot of trees and shadows happening here at Monza. So we can get the best, I guess, example of how all this works. Now we are actually gonna be setting all of this up on our phone rather than on the PC. Once you've got the sync running and it's set to the right configuration on the, on the uh, PC app, all the rest of it's done on your phone. So I'll quickly drive around to the back straight for you guys and then we can have a look at the configuration. So we're up here on the back straight at Monza now with a whole bunch of trees and shadows across the track. This is gonna be a really good example. And what we need to do is on the phone app, we're gonna go across to settings. And we're gonna scroll down to entertainment areas and we're gonna select the daytime sync. And you can see at the moment light sync is active. That's active through the app on the desktop. I'm gonna tap on that guy. And now you can see we've got our three lights and a relative position. So given that we've got a triple screen rig here at the moment, you can see we've only got one screen here. It's kind of designed for a normal sort of entertainment room type configuration. So 
The square screen here is actually representing the entire triple screen arrangement that we have here. So we need to kind of account for that. If we're wanting to pick a spot in the middle of the screen, you know, we're gonna have to go quite tight in the middle here because obviously only a very thin strip actually represents the middle screen of our configuration here. And you can see we've got an area all the way back here towards the couch that we can actually select from like so. so what we found is we want to have all three of these, and this is obviously going to depend on the placement of your lights. We're just going to use the one that I have here as an example at the moment. So just to give you an idea of how this works, you can tap on these and the one that's selected will actually blink. So you can see now the one on my lap is blinking, which is the one we've got selected here. And what we're going to do is we're going to move that towards the top of the screen, somewhere in the center here. And that's going to tell it to take its source of light from somewhere on the middle screen. Now, obviously we need to select a position vertically as well, and we'll do that in just a moment. We're gonna move all three of these lights to basically the same general position. And if we tap on each light, you can see a selection between TV height, ceiling height, and ground height. So ground height is basically taking the light source from an area somewhere on the bottom of the screen relative to the uh, horizontal position that you've got selected as well. If we tap it on TV height, that's somewhere in the middle, and then ceiling height is somewhere towards the top of the screen. So obviously in the case of being inside a closed cabin vehicle, you wanna have the light source somewhere inside the cabin. So what you're actually getting cast on your body and on the sim in general is relative to what you'd have inside the cabin of the car. So we're gonna go with ground height. What we're finding is if we have it selected on TV height, often it's picking up you know, the green grass or maybe the ripple strips or the blue sky. So we're getting some crazy colors going on. And that can work quite well depending on how your lighting is set up. Of course, if you wanna have you know, the green trees kind of reflecting through the windscreen and lighting you up, casting a bit of a you know green glow or something like that, you can do that. But what we're finding for our configuration is you kind of want to have these set to ground height. But again, it's purely going to come down to you know your configuration where you actually have the lights placed in your rig as well as the overall size of the rig itself as well. So we're going to set all three of these to ground height for now. So we'll go ground height. Well, we just need to drag it down so we can see it. Ground height. And then we're going to move it to the top of the screen, pretty much dead center. So what that's doing is it's taking that position and it's taking the light source from the bottom of the screen. So that should be taking it from somewhere around in the cabin where it's sort of, you know, relative to what we would actually have inside the cabin when we're driving. We're going to move all three of those to roughly the same position. And again, we'll fine tune all of this later on once we've got our light positioning correct inside the room. But I just wanted to give you a rough idea for now. And once we're happy with that, we hit save. And now what we should be able to do, and I might just get Tom to turn off the other room lights as well, just so we get a more dramatic effect of exactly what's going on. So the only light that you'll see on me from now is just the light that's coming off the screens themselves, as well as the strip lights that are kind of sitting around the room. So with a very basic layout done, again, remembering we don't have these lights in the correct position at all yet. Let's just quickly drive through this section here on the back straight at Monza and show you how it looks with some shadows. So. We'll drive down here and what we should see is as we go underneath in the shadows, the light dims, comes bright again. Okay, that actually works really well. So the cabin of the car is what we're really looking at here. So as we light up inside the cabin, we should see the lights brighten up as well. So there we go, go a little bit wider out here. I mean, at least from where I'm sitting, I don't know what it looks like on camera. This is sort of a first attempt here, and obviously it's going to be extremely exaggerated right now because I'm kind of just sitting here with the light right in my face. Once we've got it positioned up correctly, it should be a lot more uniform. But I mean, at least as a, as a proof of concept, it seems to be working really well. So I think what we'll do is we'll get the lights mounted up now. We'll get them all in the positions that I think that they need to be. And then we'll go in, we'll do a little bit more fine tuning on the app as well. Because I want to spend a little bit more time explaining exactly how all that positioning works once we've actually got it relative to the physical position of the light. So let's get all that done now and then we'll come back and have a more detailed look at the app and the configuration.
Okay, so we've got all three of the lights mounted up on the ceiling now. So it looks pretty self-explanatory, but there's a couple of reasons why we did it exactly in the way that we did. We kind of thought about having lights lower, having lights reflecting upwards, but we wanted to try and simulate the way a light actually comes into a car. You know, when you're inside a closed cabin car, obviously, you know, the light's coming in from the side windows rather than above your head. But we also didn't want to have the lights, you know, so close to the screens that they're going to be reflecting off each other and, you know, being a distraction when driving as well. So we kind of had to factor in a lot of different things there. So if you come in a little bit close up, you can imagine if we had a light bar sitting on top of the screen here, then we would actually see the reflection of it on this side. If we had it low down, we'd have the same problem. If we have them too low down, around the top of the sim as well, we find we get reflections too. We did a bit of experimenting with one of our key lights that we often use for lighting videos prior to doing this arrangement. And basically we had to have the light about sort of maybe a foot below the ceiling or higher to not have any weird reflections going on on the screen. So we originally thought about maybe having some sort of assembly that we hung, well we thought about originally build, building a canopy over the sim that we could kind of mount the lights to. Then we thought about maybe hanging some sort of a gantry or some sort of an assembly from the ceiling as well, like a suspended ceiling so we could hang stuff from that as well. And then we thought, well, we probably don't need to go to that extent. Probably what we can do is just mount the light strips to the ceiling. And because we're able to sort of point them inwards, the light's kind of reflecting off the walls off the ceiling and it's kind of creating this nice overall ambience without it being too direct and too focused. So it's kind of, you get a general sense of light in the color that you want to the left, to the right and to the center without it kind of being too overpowering in any one direction and looking unnatural. So that's the theory at least. We've done a bit of a test drive here and uh, it all seems to be working pretty well. But what we thought we'd do now is dim the lights down so the only light source in the room is gonna be the three strip lights that you see there as well as the light coming off the screens of course. One other thing that we have done is dim down the screens quite a lot as well so we don't have a huge contrast ratio between what the camera's seeing in the cabin and the light projected off the screen and that's actually given us slightly better color reproduction on the screens as well. So I think it's gonna improve the overall quality of the videos even beyond just the ambient lighting which is really cool. So let's jump in now. We'll go for a drive and see how it all looks. Okay, so welcome back to the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. We're gonna take a drive down the back stretch of Monza underneath all the trees and bridges so we really get a strong shadow effect going on. Now, one of the things that I'm sure you've probably noticed by now, there's probably already a million comments from people that didn't watch the whole video before commenting. You might have noticed in the previous uh, perspective that we did from this angle, there was quite a lot of flickering going on with the camera and that's caused by the PWM or pulse width modulated LED strips that we're using here. They actually pulse the uh, current on and off to create the dimming effects. So that can often cause a bit of a flicker. You don't see it with the naked eye, but it can be a bit of an issue when doing content creation. So all that we needed to do to fix that was to adjust our shutter speed and frame rate on our cameras to match the uh, frequency of the lights, which was 50 hertz in our case. So once we did that, so 50 frames per second and 50 hertz or a, uh, a multiplier of that, so 25 frames per second or 100 frames per second, for example, as soon as you do that, it stops the weird flickering. So just to uh, clarify that for you guys before we go for a drive here, but let's go down the straight now we're in bright screen at the moment so when we go underneath the shadow here we'll just take it nice and slow we'll go underneath the shadow should see it dip out that is crazy <laughs> that works so much better than I expected like I, I only took it at speed before so I was kind of just getting flashing but this is mental It really does add a whole new dimension to the driving because you're genuinely seeing the reflect. Like I didn't expect it to really add that much immersion, but actually seeing the lighting on my arms and the wheel and all the things around me changing exactly relative to what's going on the screen is just, it takes it to a whole nother level again, which is just crazy. So the best way I can describe it is it's like driving in VR. It's like being that immersed but actually seeing my physical arms in front of me so I can interact and I can push the buttons and see the buttons and everything. It really is that immersive and that crazy. So let's pick up a bit of speed now. We'll just do one more lap and I'm gonna apologize in advance for my terrible driving. I've never actually driven this car around this track in a set of Corsa before. So I'm gonna be really, really slow, but that's not really the point of this video. So we can see now as we're going down the straight, we've got normal light, we'll flash under the bridge quickly and it dipped out. So the other thing you'll notice is that the 
Ambient lighting also changes relative to the direction that the sun's shining into the car. So the sun's quite low at the moment, the shadows are quite long. So you can see the angle that I'm driving at the moment, the sun's kind of coming in and illuminating the dash in front of me. So we've got more light coming in from the front that's illuminating my face. But when we go around, you can see now, for example, the light is more behind. So the front of the dash is actually in shadow. So now we've got a little bit more shadow on her face than we had before. So having the lights arranged around us in the manner that we've done it works quite well for that as well. And again, it's down to just making sure that we're using the dash as our reference point and not the sky around us. We'll come down the back street at a little, we'll back straight at a little bit more speed now. And let's see how it goes. So I can see it blinking away. It's all happening very quickly. It's not as extreme looking as it was when we went slowly, but it does still give me that immersion. And hopefully it looks as good, or hopefully the camera's doing it justice because it really is something else. But let's quickly just pull over again now and um, I just want to run you through the final configuration that we did in the software as well because it actually ended up being quite a lot more simple than, um, than I originally anticipated. So as you can see here, we've literally just got the center one kind of towards the top of the screen there on the screen. But as you guys know from before, you do have that height adjustment. So we tap that so it's at ground level. And then what I actually ended up doing was setting the um, two side ones at ground level as well, just so again, we're picking up the lighting from the cabin rather than the green or the blue on the outside, because that looks a little bit unnatural on camera. And it really was as simple as just having the lights positioned exactly as they are in real life, pretty much just around the outside. And uh, yeah, it was as simple as that. So what we'll do now is a little bit more final tweaking, make sure that we've got this as good as it can possibly be. We'll test out some nighttime driving as well. I think we might do Suzuka for that. And then we can do a driver's eye view hot lap around a couple of tracks. And uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Okay, so we're in Automobilista 2 now. Driving around Suzuka at nighttime with a thunderstorm. So it's gonna be chaos in terms of driving and trying to stay on track, but Let's have a look at how this works. We should get, whoa, that is crazy. Okay, let's go. Whoa. <laughs> it's, I, I don't even know where to start trying to describe just the immersion that it gives you is just incredible. Like it really is like that missing link. <laughs> Man, like it, it's, it's hard to describe like, but I'm feeling almost a sense of like genuine fear because I really, I'm that immersed in it. It's similar to when you're driving in VR and you get, you just get so immersed in the experience that you actually start to feel scared of crashing. Like I, I feel like I'm scared to go any faster because I know if I spear into a wall, it's gonna be terrifying. But that is just something else. And I mean, I know that the lights are quite expensive, but I would say, provided you've got, and I mean, you don't need to have monster massive screens like we have here. Like I know that this is a, very extreme example and it's a demonstration of what's possible pretty much with unlimited budget at this point and I like I, I understand and appreciate that but for the 350 Australian dollars I think it was that we spent on these lights the amount of additional immersion that we're getting from it is just absolutely worth it and I think that this is something that you could I mean, as we've seen in, um, in SimGP's video, you know, he's got much smaller screens than we have. And he was able to achieve very similar results to this as well. So I'd say don't be put off by the fact that we are running, you know, the big screens and the crazy motion rig here. I think that, you know, if this is something that you're interested in doing for yourself, but even just like as we go past the lights here as well, just absolutely crazy. And even though like I'm not looking at my arms when I'm driving, just having that periphery, whoops, almost missed the turn. Just having that ambient lighting in my periphery and just seeing the way it reflects on my arms. is just insane. 
Whoops! <laughs> Completely missed my braking point. Oh, wow. That is just incredible. So we might do a couple more laps. We might try a, um, maybe a transition from daytime to nighttime with other cars as well. So you get a sense of the lighting, you know, and the headlights from other cars too, and then call it a day. Okay, so a quick transition from evening to nighttime here at Bathurst. We're gonna test out this transition because you'll remember at the start of the video, we went through and we set up a couple of different entertainment areas, one for daytime, and one for night time and I suspect that that was probably not necessary given our particular implementation with the pretty basic placement of the lights. Now I know that SimGP with his more complex setup did find that it was necessary so this isn't a sort of you don't need to do it statement or anything like that it's just a I want to test this out for our particular implementation because I think most people are probably having a more basic setup like what, what we have rather than you know heaps and heaps of lights like what he's done so we want to test this out for you guys but also just want to see what it looks like we've got those beautiful light rays coming through over the mountain there just three laps today we want to keep this relatively short for you but get a nice good transition so we can see how it all works get the headlights turned on get that beautiful 90s el glow on the dash down the mountain. Try to get a run on them down Conrod. Oh, okay, they'll be too brave. Okay, we should be able to get down the inside into the next turn. Whoa, he's moving across on me. I did have the AI aggression turned up, which would explain that. See if I can get down the inside of this guy too. There we go, job done. This is amazing how well it's replicating that ambient light, at least for me as the driver. Hopefully it looks as good on camera as it does in real life right now, but it's just so immersive. Just seeing the way those shadows cast across. It's starting to get proper dark now. Whoa. Come on, boys. Whoa. Whoa. Probably turned in on him a bit there, I think. But I'm getting a sense of light coming from behind me now as well, which is what I was trying to achieve with the placement of those side lights and having them a little bit further back. I'm sort of really getting the sense of, and it's also generated by having the light bar in front of me as well. I'm getting a sense of the, the headliner of the car kind of being illuminated by the headlights of the car behind me. And you can see on the road there, the shadow being cast in front of the car from the headlights shining forward. And I'm really getting a sense of that sitting inside the cabin as well which is really cool i mean it's just just it seems like whatever we throw at it it just seems to work so now we've got a scenario where it's darker outside than it than it is inside the car so the interior of the car is pretty well illuminated can't shake this guy got another one on my outside now too Get down the inside. Okay. Oh yeah, it seems to be working just perfectly. Whoops, Other, unlike my driving.
All right, I'm gonna stay quiet up through the top of the mountain now. Just let you guys enjoy. The cars behind it drop back now. You can see it's much darker in the cabin now because I don't have those headlights behind me. So it's just what's going on in front of the car. I really do feel like I'm inside the cabin of the car now. It really is just something else. And then as soon as you can see, as soon as I've got a car behind me again, we get that little bit of illumination in the cabin again. This is working so well. I honestly didn't expect it to be this good and this simple as well. I mean, it really was very, very simple to set up. And there we go. Woo! <laughs> that is just something else. That is awesome. All right, guys. So I hope that you found this video interesting. I'm absolutely gobsmacked with the result. I honestly didn't expect it to be this good, but I'm absolutely thrilled that it is. And I think in terms of value for money, it's definitely up there with the butt kicker, I'd say, in terms of you know the money we spent and what it gives to the overall experience of driving. I just, yeah, absolutely blown away with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Another big shout out as well to SimGP channel. Go check out his channel as well, because if it wasn't for that video, I wouldn't have known that any of this was possible. And uh, yeah, big shout out to him. So thanks very much for watching, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Don't forget to check out our 100,000 subscriber giveaway as well, where we're giving away a 3,200 US dollar direct drive sim rig. That is a really exciting one. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for all the support. We'll see you again soon. Bye.